Hey everybody, and welcome back to Expedition Engineering. If you're new here, you have some catching up to do because Jade and I are in the process of rebuilding basically this. This is our Bimini. We're on a 49 foot sailboat and we really want it to be made out of carbon fiber, foam, epoxy, and solar panels. And so we are in the process of building that. And I think it's safe to say that this project is big. It's bigger physically. Let's go financially, emotionally, you name it, it's big. But in this episode, we actually need to make it bigger. We've built the majority of the most forward section and the majority of the most rearward section, the legs and some of the hard top. But now it's time to start filling in the middle sections and the sides. Like all of the hard top pieces, we measured out a few million times, then laid out the foam and cut it. This is going to be the next forward piece on the rear arch to be glassed to the rear arch. And once it's ready, we start working on the side curves. Honestly, this whole project is basically a big chicken and egg kind of game. I don't know if that's the right analogy, but we want to do the next forward section, but it makes more sense to do the curves before we do that next forward section. So we pause it. But then once we realize that we're gonna be doing the curve section, we realize that we actually need to finish up the rain gutter before we can glass on the curves to that section before we can attach that rear section to the rear arch. You get the idea? Nice. Yeah, when we add that other bit, little bit right there, and it's not gonna be that tall, it's gonna be like that tall. Yeah, I and mean, then that'll be solid there. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those things that they really can't see it. You know? Later or now? Yeah, because it just kind of looks weird because it's a few steps away from being finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's cool. I'm excited. I think it looks beautiful. It looks huge because it needs to get trimmed. As we're looking into our future, we see a lot more large layups on this form coming up soon. And with our new vacuum bag experience, I decided to try and make our form airtight. I prepped the wood, poured an expensive amount of epoxy on it, followed by our leftover 17 ounce e-glass. Now this is going to prove to be very foolish since I didn't use a finishing layer. And we'll then proceed to spend the next several days, hopefully not sanding through this newly formed airtight layer. This is day three of making our form and we give it another sand and we might be good to go. We'll see. I think it'll be worth it. falling asleep with a shop today. Actually, that's incorrect. I fell asleep on the ground. This is Jade's new mattress. <laughs> I don't know why I was so sleepy. Okay, it is time to lay up this piece. This is the part that will go from what we've already built to the standing rigging, which will be right here. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be our first time using the form that has now been glassed and epoxied and sanded by Brett as our bottom half of our vacuum bag suction situation. So basically, let's put one piece of plastic on top of the piece taped to our actual form so when the air sucks out, it forces the piece down on the curve. To the form. To the form. 
Yeah, rather than just sitting on top of it, it's actually going to suck to it. So for the first time, we won't have to put a bunch of jugs of water or weight to hold it into its shape. The actual vacuuming process will hold it into its shape. Have you already explained no, no, all no, no. this? No, this is good. I have not explained it. Oh, okay. I have, I have like a 12% optimism that it'll work. Where do you think it'll go wrong? I think... I don't know how, it's, how our vacuum bag is going to get into the corners. That's, that's the failure point I see. Just we might just have to have really big radiuses. Radii? Yeah, we just have to have like Better keep dying because this is taking forever. These time, these time lapses, these layups, just it's just time. It just takes so much time. So I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the fact. It just takes so much time. And I've been talking nonstop. Back about energy. Right now, also, which makes it take longer to prep. It does. Yeah, time goes to like 0.5 speed. <laughs> <laughs> like. Complete the more. Set the other piece on there just to make sure it stays in the right shape in case it loses vacuum. And have it was losing vacuum. So, in case it completely loses vacuum, which it will, it'll at least be in the right shape. <laughs> Good night. Hey, sweaty. We just got back from the rock gym and we were climbing with uh, a guy named Toby. Nice to meet you, Toby. And uh, now we're going to see how this looks. I managed to forget memory cards yesterday. So we worked a bunch yesterday and didn't film a thing. But this is the Dodger Arch. It's got a bunch of carbon fiber on now. It should be all cured. And we did the other, that curve. This is the next hard top part. And so we are going to check it out. Should we cut that? Yeah, this is the center line. Yeah, this is our center line because we have uh, mounting blocks or mounting spots right here that has wood glassed in. So we need to to make sure we can measure. I guess we could measure from the outside, but. That's true, but we're gonna cut the outsides later. And yeah. then the outsides are gonna be curved. And it's like, how do you measure from a curved object? That's a huge issue that we're running into a lot lately. Also, we measured from the center, so. So far, so good. Oh, it looks pretty. <coughs> That is super stiff, bruh. Nice. And that's only two layers. Yeah. Uh, we're modernizing our boat a little bit. Yeah. With new boats, it seems that travelers are kind of going out and... I don't know. Travelers are out, Dodger Archers are in. Dodger Archers are in. It simplifies the deck a lot. So we're going to be trading it out. We're going to be putting our main sheet out like there. That's about right. I don't know how these set up like that. Yep. And so then our control of our boom will be located here, which means all of those forces of the wind on the main sheet, which is a lot, 
will be right here. So this needs to be super strong. It needs yep. to be super strong and it needs to be able to handle loads in a lot of different directions. Um, pulling up, pulling sideways. And there is some calculations on how to, fi to figure out how much force that's going to be. It's actually going to be less force than is currently on our Traveler because the mounting points are actually moving aft on the boom. So leverage wise, it's less force going to be on these points, which is good. Um, I'm also considering getting a, a putting a boom brake on in case we do get a crash jive or something like that, then it wouldn't be such a, a smashing hit on this. You know, it would be a, a much softer blow. So something to consider on that as well. I think that's just a good idea in general. Uh, we, our traveler, we've seen it bow up in times when we get a lot of wind, which I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but it's definitely a little concerning when it does that. But yeah, so we're gonna do that. We gotta re-glass, put more carbon on that one and do this curve. That's today. This morning. That's this morning. Yeah. Hopefully this afternoon we'll be able to lay up the Dodger portion of the hardtop. Yep. form rebuilt. Jade cleaned up these edges and got the rain gutter back on there. It got knocked off in transit at one point. I just acetoned it. Now we need to flip it over and carbon on the top side and then flip it and carbon on the bottom side. Carbon on the top side, now we need to flip it and carbon the outside with the curve. We got plastic on the curve. We'll put in a little more of our fairing filler and the gaps. We just flipped it back over and have the curve on there now. And so what we're doing is we're getting it also, it's going to be a, the same chemical bond. So if you lay up the carbon with the epoxy while it's still wet, at least while it's still tacky, it makes a chemical bond. So then it essentially it's just one big piece. It's not one piece kind of glued to another piece. It essentially is just one unit. So we did the other side, the top side, which is now upside down, the rain trough. And now Jay just put some of the fairing filler in there to make a radius and we'll lay more carbon. So now it's sandwiched basically on both sides of the rain catch, becoming one big curve. And that'll give a lot of strength, kind of fore and aft and twisting for the whole piece by having that big, long, you know, vertical curve. It's getting warmer now, so, I mean, it's gotten warmer. It is warm. It is warm. <laughs> so I'm doubling up on gloves. It's always good to do, because then you can tape the top layer of glove off and have a clean glove. But we've gotten to the point that the inner glove needs to never come off because then you can't get any more gloves on because it's that? sweaty. <laughs> we're running low on paintbrushes. I need to order more. But so we're trying to use them before they go bad. You can wash them. We've learned that you can't really wash them and use them the next day. You can wash them and use them more that day, but that's it. That was fast here, Epoxy. The curve is all done. See, it's all. <laughs> 
so messy. We gotta clean up. Glass on, yeah, there's, you can see it overhangs a bunch here and it's too long this way. This is the line it needs to go to. So it'll all get cut to size, but it's easier to get it exact because the carbon fiber stretches a little bit. So it's easier just to make it a little bit too big and then cut it to the exact size since we don't have that perfect of a form. Jade's cleaning up the roller and I think we're done for the morning. Yeah, let that set up and then we'll come back for another round once that's all cured. Yep, we'll come back this evening. This should cure while we go home and work and edit. Maybe I'll edit not this video, but a couple videos ago. <laughs>